Wow, you're asking really yeah. hard-hitting questions. Also inventive questions. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's an interesting question. I'm so jealous of that head of hair, man. Dude, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> I would love to see this head of hair on you. Oh, well, I'd love to see it, too. Oh. <laughs> You are part of a, a small group of actors who have gotten in the R-rated freedom in an M. Night Shyamalan film. He's only yeah. done two R-rated films. Right. But just to have fun for a second, what is an it's M. Night Shyamalan film? Yeah, it's only What's a the other film. one? The Happening. Okay. Uh, the, with, uh, with Mark Wahlberg. Right. But thinking about your, your favorite M. Night Shyamalan moments over cinematic history that are PG-13, which one would you hypothetically love to see maybe just turned up to 11 and given oh, that R-rated? Oh, interesting, yeah. Interesting. I'm actually surprised that ours is R. I, I, can I actually say that I don't know what R rating is? <laughs> <laughs> so there's like G Cause, and Just because we don't have that in the in UK. The you don't? No. Oh, okay. Oh, it just means that there's, it's um, <laughs> kids under 17 aren't allowed in without parents. Bru wow, yeah. is it? I have to be honest and say that I, I wouldn't change any of his films. I think that, you know, that'd be a sacrilegious to even say. <laughs> Um, I would, my answer to your question would be, The Village is my favorite film of his. And even though I've, that's expertly non-violent, actually, but, but, you know, it could be more violent. It definitely could be, there could be a bit more gore, a bit more scary. You know? I'd say Sixth Sense is quite an important one for me because I think it was the first kind of grown-up movie I'd ever watched. Um, and even now, it, it's one I rewatch, which is unusual for that kind of genre. Um, I rewatched it, always, it on Thursday, and it, it's perfect. It's so good, isn't it? And it's always, it always catches me out. I never... Expect it, <laughs> I know everything. So, um, yeah, something I mean, that was already quite kind of quite graphic, but um, I don't know how you'd turn that up. I was saying, um, so I love, some of the ghosts, I think maybe like with an R rating yeah, would be, right. yeah, yeah, would yeah, be yeah. cool. Lady in the Water, <laughs> <laughs> Naked Lady in the Woods, yeah, Naked exactly. Lady in the Water. <laughs> yes, it's a billion dollar movie right there. <laughs> I think it would be a shame. I'm going through his films in my head, and I, I just think it would be a shame to, to alter any of them the way they are. And just uh, for the sake of making them rated R. So much of this movie is about choices. And so I really want to start out talking about yours because while a lot of people have made the transition from wrestling to acting, mm. no one's making the choices you are. No one's working with the directors that you're working with. And quite frankly, no one is giving the performances that you're giving. Mm. I'm just curious as to the, the X factor in your choices, your decisions, that have seemed to have put you on a different path than other people who have made that transition. Uh, you know... I can only speak for myself, and I can only say that when I, I, I made the statement, and this is because it was a true sentiment, is when I left wrestling, I didn't set out to be a movie star. I wanted to be an actor, because that's why I left. I, fell, I really fell in love with acting, and the way I fell in love with it, is because it, was, it was almost an obsession. I realized how bad I was at it, and I wanted to get better at it, and I wanted to prove that I could be a, a good actor, and so that was it. It's not... That I, you know, I, I, I like the action roles. I, uh, I just don't seek them. I think that's a natural. It's kind of a given. You know, put you know the ex wrestler into an action role, but it's the dramatic roles that I've had to seek. I've had to seek out, and they it hasn't been easy because I have to get people to really think outside of the box when they cast me in roles like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was it. I just set out on a mission to find good acting roles, it, and you mm -hmm. did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to talk about whenever you play a character who has your tattoos. Yeah. When you get a tattoo, tattoo, it has to have significance to you. There's a reason For you're sure. going to have it. Do you have to decide what the tattoo significance to your character is? Like why that character would have gotten those tattoos? Sometimes, mm -hmm. but most of the time, um, I'm helped with those decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so for Leonard, but, for instance, like, yeah. like, do you think like why yeah. Leonard would be tatted up? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, um, you know, we we kind of. Th thought about Leonard and who he was, and we thought maybe he was an ex-athlete, and he would have tattoos. He grew up in the city, grew up in Chicago, and he wouldn't, you know, it would be a natural thing for him. He'd be a big muscle head with tattoos. <laughs> not odd, but there were things that we had to change, and so, like on my knuckles, it says rock star. Yeah. And Knight said, just, Leonard doesn't seem like the type of guy who would have rock star on his knuckles, so we changed them, and we made them, like, kind of designs, and and so, you know, that a little bit of that thought process. Are there any others? I, I was trying to remember, like, did the, did the, no, the really logos just, go in? Their logos were all in. So he's a pop culture we fan. We think, yeah, Leonard is. <laughs> That's, oh, oh, I'd love yeah, to have this yeah. actor. Oh, my yeah. God, that is fantastic. Yeah. And we, you know, it's funny because after, after a few conversations uh, with Knight, because I didn't know about the role. I didn't know mm -hmm. about Leonard. I didn't know what the movie was. I never got the script until I had about three or four conversations with Knight. Mm -hmm. um, 
But he, I read it, and I went back to him, and I said, I love this. And he goes, you know what, you, you really are Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> and, so wait, how do you a, interpret that? I, I took it as a compliment, yeah, because I don't, you know, I'm not that type of guy who's, like, I don't like to intimidate people. I don't like to, I don't need to walk into a room and prove I'm a big, bad, tough guy. Yeah. It, it means nothing to me. I'd rather think people, I'd rather have people think that I'm intelligent, mm -hmm. I'm well-spoken, I'm artistic, rather than, you know, he's a big meathead. I don't want people to think that of me. So I think, uh, you know, I can relate to Leonard that way. I think he's a gentle guy, and he intentionally makes himself smaller and, and gentle and comes across gentle because he doesn't want to intimidate people. Which is why I feel weird, like, whenever I've read articles that say, oh, like, you know, you, you know Dave Batista plays the villain in the new Shyamalan yeah. film, but you see the movie, and you're like, I, f I feel weird calling him a villain in the same yeah. way we would your right. characters from Dune or, right. or, or, you know. Oh, for sure. It's just, it's Dune, just I'm different. a villain. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of like, there's no question there. There's no question there. Hey, man, uh, I seriously, I am just continuously in awe yeah. of your performances, dude. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, and you just do amazing work. And, yeah. and so much of your work ends up on my top ten list at the end of it. Dune was my number one film of yeah, the year. I'll wait so till you see the new one. Dude, is it fucking awesome? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Yeah. I fucking love you. Dude, yeah. thank you for all thank the things you, over. Dude, the choices you're making are just absolutely phenomenal. Oh, no, so seriously, thank you, thank you for your time, man. Thank you. That's absolutely pleasure. Um, obviously, your previous experience working with, with Knight uh, is a series. So you have episodes, seasons, literally years to flesh out yes. a character and get to know them. With here, you just have a finite amount of time. If you had had those seasons, <laughs> those episodes, those years to get to know this character better, what are some aspects of him that you would have loved to have you know, dived into over a couple of years? Yeah, absolutely. That's an interesting question. Because, yeah, I mean, I think what you do when you kind of approach with something like this, you, you often want to fill in those gaps that you don't necessarily see because we only kind of know these people and we, we're right there in this very kind of intense situation so we don't really get much chance to actually know a lot about them. But, yeah, he's a fascinating character. I really enjoy it. And I've never played anyone quite like him, but he's also a very relevant character. He's someone that is very familiar, particularly kind of in these times. He's kind of quite disenfranchised, got quite a shady past and maybe kind of quite shady views well definitely shady views um, so yeah and, and, and we find him in this moment of kind of reform he's trying to kind of get everything back and then <laughs> this is kind of presented uh, to him so it's yeah it's, it's a very conflicted broken kind of person which is always interesting to play you, you talk about his backstory and I'm going to ask this question without giving anything away but there's a uh, there's a scene in the film where we think we may or may not have seen this guy before do you play him in that scene <laughs> I don't know if I can give anything away, but um, I'm just doing because you like we don't see. Sure, know. yeah. No, to be fair, I haven't actually I haven't watched it yet. I'm seeing it tomorrow for the okay. first time. But, All right, um, dude, it's yeah, honestly, it's great. Oh, great. Yeah, nice you're gonna trust me. I do junkets every day, and whenever I don't like something, you sort of just awkwardly go. <laughs> yeah. It's a film. It exists. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask a quick sidebar question before coming back to this film because uh, I'm working on a tribute piece to John Williams right now. Oh, he's amazing. coming to Chicago cool. yeah, yeah, to yeah. conduct the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, and he's about that. to retire from from uh, scoring film. And obviously one of his great scores is, is Potter. And I'm just sort of yeah. curious, is, his, your, your thoughts of just him as a composer and, and specifically that score and what he means to you? Oh, he's just amazing. I think he's just, it's kind of incredible career, really, the, the, the scores that he's, he's done. And, and, and yeah, I mean, Potter, it, it's, weird, it's weird. I have a weird kind of relationship with it. It's almost like a national anthem to me. Whenever I hear it, I do kind of feel quite proud. And it's just so perfectly pitched. And um, I couldn't imagine any other... So I mean he's 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 brilliant, and I was lucky enough. I saw him actually um, conduct an orchestra at the I think it was at the the, the, the theme park um, at Universal, and to see him kind of actually there kind of conduct it was it was amazing. He's he's an le absolute legend. He's chills. Um, I'm going to cut you loose on this. The young actress Kristen in this is phenomenal. Yeah. Like it's just like her, and that's the kind of performance that can like ruin a movie if it's not good. But she's so amazing. There's no one else in the cast that has the experience of what she's going through being a young actor on set. I'm just sort of curious uh, if you were ever, ever able to use your own experience as a young actor to kind of like maybe g give her advice or tips that no one else really has that perspective with. Yeah, no, it's an interesting perspective. Obviously, um, Christian was way kind of younger than, than I was. Um, I started when I was 11, but um, I think, yeah, I mean, you just got to kind of go with that. And obviously this kind of subject matter is a lot darker and she was did so well kind of kind of pitching that um, and, and, and I'll give credit to Knight as well he's, he's so good uh, with talking to her and kind of putting his notes into these really kind of digestible kind of ways without and always kind of keeping her in it it was, it was fascinating to watch um, yeah he kind of reminds me of Spielberg in a way of like his ability to work with kids when you, when you look at Sixth Sense or Signs like he's got I mean that's a that's that's a separate language that I feel like you yeah. might be able to communicate with yeah he's so good and actually weirdly I didn't learn this until a few years ago that he was actually 
he was going to do a Potter movie. He was going to do the third movie. No way. Yeah, I met him as a kid, and uh, so he, we, we could have met a lot earlier, and that would have been interesting. But yeah, no, I think you know, completely agree. Do you remember that meeting? Yeah, I do. Think, yeah, um, I remember. Yeah, because it was the time when Chris Columbus was about to leave, and we kind of meeting kind That's of various. It's, people it's, I'm, I'm torn yeah. about that because because that one's my favorite, and, and yeah. Alfonso did such an incredible job. But I would have loved to have seen what Shyamalan would have done. It would have been interesting to see what, been his very, kind of spin on it. Wow. Um, but dude, I just want to say, dude, some of my greatest greatest cinematic experiences have been because of you, and the oh. fact that your work has just continued to evolve and, and mature. It's just like your performance in this is it's unbelievable. So I just oh, want to say thank, thank you for you so your time. Much. Thank you for always being so kind. Thank you so good much. You, have a great week. Jake Hamilton, Very good, good Chicago. Like, nice fitting jacket. Oh, it is. I nice appreciate fitting you. Suit. Oh, keep going. I got yeah. five minutes. I'll take five minutes to compliment. <laughs> uh, guys, I love this movie so much. Um, you know, obviously, you guys have such a great history of, of performing on stage. My first trip to New York, I'm sure you hear this a lot. I was 18, it was 2006, and I saw Spring Awakening. It was my very first what? trip to New York. Yeah. Uh, I was just sort of, because I feel like this story could actually be, it would be a great play. I would love to see it performed on stage. Musical what is, Look at the Cabin. What is I mean, a he said sacrifice? Like, you said musical. Yes, you went musical. I'll take that. What is a oh, moment that you would, you would love to do this in front of a live audience from this film? What scene? Um, yes, yeah. Hmm. I know what scene I would want to see Ben do, which is when he like goes mental on the chair. It's like whenever Ben is like shaking the chair and bouncing up and down. You'd want to that see I'd like to see on stage. Your chair acting isn't is it amazing? Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't, like, I don't, it sounds like I'm joking, but really, like it's. What you guys do while t- are all tied up is unbelievable. Adding that to the CV, for sure. As, as a special skill. As a special yeah. skill. Yeah. Um, Chair acting. What scene would I... I don't, it, it all felt like all the cabin stuff was like one big long scene. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think. I, I, the, the, I, I, the fight with um, Nikki with Sabrina would be an interesting one to do live on stage. It might be quite tricky, but you know, I'm up for that stage combat. Love that. Again, I would pay to see that. Uh, obviously, when it comes to M. Night Shyamalan films, so many of them rely on uh, spoiler alerts and making sure that you don't spoil the movie for people and not ruin it, particularly with the endings. What is the worst something has ever been spoiled for you? Oh, great question. Wow, you're asking really yeah. hard-hitting questions. Also inventive questions. Um, Santa, Santa Claus? Oh, you mean in life or in oh, in I was thinking pop culture. <laughs> Oh, then <laughs> you, you know the local same, news. We can't. Santa Claus. Oh, my sister yeah. ruined it for me. Yeah. Yeah. You said it's gonna get bleeped out. Like yeah, I said, yeah, something I was gonna dirty. Say, like, it's better that you ruin the ending of Sixth Sense than ruin Santa Claus. Okay. I mean, I agree with you. The thing that was spoiled for me. Um, I have to say, this is a fake. This is a kind of a silly answer, but. Uh-huh. Even when I know the ending, I still love the movie. Sure. I don't know if like knowing the ending has ever ruined anything for me ever. Yeah, I can't think of something where I was like, no! I, uh, yeah. Like Drag Race, maybe like a competition show. Oh, sure, I sure, don't want to know sure. the ending of that, but yeah, movies, not not as much. So just re- like, like, a, like a, basically something you're investing like weeks in to sort of see who like the winner is. Yeah. yeah God, it. and even then, I still would watch it. Yeah, same. Yeah. Love that. Well, you guys are better people than I am. I, 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 <laughs> I have friendships that have been ruined because of like, oh, oh dude, did you see the ending of that? Guys, seriously, I, thank you for saying such nice things about my questions. I really appreciate it. They were great. Oh, oh my God. I, I wish I had better answers. No, they really are, like needed time to think. They were so good. I love you guys. Seriously. And congratulations. Thank I truly you. love the film. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Where we're going, we don't need roads.